Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another masterclass. As I announced uh, today, we are going to work on the third movement of the Sans-Sans Cello Concerto. But before we do, a quick announcement that uh, tomorrow night at 12 o'clock Eastern time and 5 p.m. German time, I'm going to give a little live concert on Violin Channel. But now let's dive into Sans-Sans. We are going to speak in general about the third movement of Sans-Sans, so about the quick passages. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys how to raise the tempo in a virtuoso piece and the techniques that we're going to work on here are going to be applicable to anything from Elfentanz by Popper, Davidoff at the Fountain, third movement of Herbert Concerto, any virtuoso piece really. So I think this is going to be useful information but we're going to work on it with the example of Sans Sans. Let's look at the first passage. I'm going to play it under tempo. <laughs> Now we have different aspects that we need to tackle. First of all, we need to have clarity in the left hand. We need to have clarity in the shifts of the hand. And we need to have very clear bow distribution and very clear bow changes. Let's first look at clarity of the left hand. I always find it very helpful to work in rhythmical patterns with the left hand. You will remember this from other master classes. Let me give you a couple of patterns to work on. Next, we want to look at the shifts of the left hand. Let's look at the first three shifts. Now, of course, for the left hand, we need to have rather explosive motion as we are moving very quickly because that will enhance the clarity. But we also need to have a continuous motion at the same time with the elbow. So think of the elbow as a slow motion that is steadily going upwards while the hand remains in the position and shoots forward as we go. So again, we have slow motion here and we have quick motion here. Notice how the elbow is preparing the shift and the hand really is following in the last moment. With that technique, you will avoid being very jerky in your movement, but actually you will have a legato of the elbow and just very quick motions in the hand. And once you raise your tempo, that's going to be essential for your flow. Now let's talk about the right hand. The right hand should be absolutely independent from the left hand. For the first passage, In my mind, of course, I'm playing the left hand the whole time. Do this also as you increase the tempo with the metronome. And now together with the left hand, you will have a much more secure right hand. I can really feel that the right hand has its own mind now, rather than just following the left hand. I think that is essential. Looking further into the piece, we have the moving sixth. Just like in the other 16th passage, I would suggest that you use rhythmical patterns. These patterns will help you to practice quick shifts in a slow tempo.
And again, although this might seem a bit silly at first, practice the right hand without the left hand. This, by the way, was not the first take. <laughs> it, it took me quite a while to get it done. So this is actually rather difficult and we never do it. And I think in order to really um, get clarity and in order to really know what the right hand is doing, especially when it comes to string changes, it is very important that you practice the right hand by itself and that you actually really feel comfortable without the help of the left hand. It also works really well for Schumann Concerto. That just came into my mind now. I'm talking about third movement. Without the left hand, it's... It's very disorienting when you don't have the left hand. Try it. I think you'll like it. All right, these are some tips how to improve your speed and your clarity and how to get up your tempo. Don't forget, don't play too fast, too quickly. Use a metronome. Go step by step, go slowly. And see you soon. Bye.